Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at City of the Big Shoulders, or Chicago 1875. This is a 2-4 player, tile placement, stock holding economic game, where you take the role of investors and entrepreneurs trying to rebuild Chicago after the Chicago Fire of 1871. You'll be starting companies, trading stocks, hiring employees, equipping your factories with resources to produce and sell goods, trying to become Chicago's greatest entrepreneur. How do you become Chicago's greatest entrepreneur and win the game? By having the most money at the end of five rounds or five decades. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components setup and how gameplay works in City of the Big Shoulders. Now let's take a look at the components. You have your main game board, your decade and phase markers, priority deal marker, and each of the four player colors you have your player aid, partner meeples, and advanced rules guide. For each of the companies you have your company charters, stock certificates for each company. Each company has one director's share which is 30%, one preferred share which is 20%, and five common shares which are 10% each. Company tokens, you have two of each company, stock bump guides, resources, the pink resources are your livestock, blue is steel, the brown are wood, and the black are coal. Your resource bag, demand tiles, building tiles, goal tiles, capital asset tiles, appeal bonus good tokens, good tokens, workers, Salespeople, managers, automation tokens, money, score pad, and your rule book. And if you have the expansion, the expansion components are five additional companies, so five additional company charters, stock certificates for each of those companies, wooden company tokens for each of the companies in the expansion and the base game, thicker paper money. And then finally, the expansion booklet. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a two-player game, which takes 15 steps. Step one, place the game board and the decade marker. You will place the main game board in the center of the play area and the decade marker on 1875. Step two, place the phase marker. You're going to place the phase marker on the stock phase. Step three, separate, shuffle, and stack demand tiles. You're going to separate the demand tiles by the number of dots on the back of the tile. From each stack you will remove a number of tiles based on the number of players. So since we're playing a two player game, we will remove all of the demand tiles that have three and four on them. If you're playing a three player game, you will remove all of the tiles that have four on them. And if you're playing a four player game, you will play with all the tiles from each stack. Then shuffle each stack and then create one main stack of demand tiles by placing them in numerical order. So all of the four dots will go on the bottom, then the threes, and then the two dots, and then the one dot demand tiles will go on top. Then you will place the stack next to the main game board. Step four, draw and place the demand tiles on the main game board. Starting with the top rightmost space in the demand area, you are going to fill in the demand area with demand tiles going from top to bottom and right to left until the three columns are full. Step five, separate, place, and shuffle capital asset tiles. You will separate the regular asset tiles from the starting asset tiles. The starting asset tiles have an S in a circle on the tile. From the starting asset tiles, you'll place the brilliant marketing on the $80 capital asset location. Then you will randomly place the other starting capital asset tiles on the 40 through 70 locations. And then you will shuffle the regular capital asset tiles and place them on their deck location. Step six, shuffle and draw five gold tiles. You're gonna shuffle the gold tiles and draw five and place them next to the main game board. Step seven, separate, shuffle, and place building tiles. You will separate the building tiles by era, which are indicated with the dots on the back of the tile. Then you will remove a number of building tiles based on the number of players. In a two-player game, you will remove numbers three and four. In a three-player game, you will remove numbers four. And in a four-player game, you will not remove any of the building tiles. Then you will shuffle each era and place them on their draw deck on the main game board. Step eight, 
place resources. You will place two resources of each type in Haymarket Square, and then the rest of the resources go in the resource bag. Step nine, draw resources. You will draw three resources for the four resource squares on the main game board, including the square with the X. Step 10, place workers. You'll place four workers on the top four $40 worker spaces on the main game board. Step 11, create supply pools. You will create supply pools for workers, managers, salespersons, goods, automation, and appeal bonus goods tokens next to the main game board. Step 12, place the money from the bank. You're gonna place the money within reach of all of the players. Step 13, deal three era one building tiles to each player. Step 14, get starting resources and components. You will get $175, a player aid in a color of your choice, two partner meeples of that same color. You'll place the third next to building three on the main game board, a fourth next to the appeal track, fifth on the turn order, and then you will save your sixth for your first company chosen to place on their second factory. Step 15, get a stock bump guide and choose your starting companies placing the remaining companies next to the main game board. When choosing a starting company, you would randomly choose a player to pick a company first and go counterclockwise. The last player that chooses will get the priority deal marker and go first on the turn order track. And then the players will place their partner meeples going clockwise. After players have had a chance to select their company, they will take the company charter and then determine the initial stock value. Those would be the darker sections on the stock value track from 35 to 60. Place the company token on that number. Then the player is required to purchase the director's share, which is 30% or three times that starting stock value, which they will pay from their personal treasury to the company treasury. They will place the company charter in front of them. Then they will place the second company token on the appeal track on the starting appeal of the company, which is in the top right corner of the company charter. If when doing so that position is occupied, then that token would go on the bottom of that stack. Then you will collect the company certificates and place them on the company charter. The money that you paid for your director's share will go on the company charter. And then you will collect automation tokens to place on the octagon spaces on the factories. And then finally, you will place your last partner meeple on the rightmost factory on that company charter. So in this case, let's say green gets to choose their company first. The green player chose Brunswick. They collect the certificates and place them on their company charter. They will choose the starting price of that stock value, which they chose to be $40. They are required to purchase the director's share, so they would pay three times the price of the stock value. So $120 would be paid to the company from the player. They will then place the director's share in their player treasury. And then they will place the second company token on the initial appeal value, which is located in the top right corner. Then it would go to the next player. And in this case, we're playing a two player game. So that player would also get the priority deal marker. And then they would place their partner meeple first on the turn order track. When placing the automation tokens on your company charters, you are going to cover up the octagons on your company charters. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game takes place over five rounds or five decades, 1875, through 1915. Each round or decade has five phases. Stock, building, action, operating, and cleanup. Now let's look at each phase in detail. The stock phase. In order of priority deal going clockwise, each player will do one of three things. They will optionally sell stock and then buy stock, start a new company, or pass. When selling stock, you may sell any number of stock certificates. Once you get the money for the stock certificates, that company will drop down the stock value track by each share that you sold. These certificates will go into the bank pool. The bank pool has a maximum based on the number of players. In the basic game, you cannot sell your director's certificate. It's good to keep in mind that you cannot sell a certain company stock and then buy the same company stock in the same decade. When buying stock, you may purchase one stock certificate from the bank or the company. When purchasing from the bank pool, you would pay the bank. And when purchasing from the company, you would pay that company. You may start a company during your turn following the starting company rules. Determine the initial value, purchase the director's share, place company tokens, certificates, money, and automation tokens. 
On your turn, you may pass and then do an action later in this phase. The phase is over when everyone passes in a row. When a company sells out of their stock certificates, their company stock value will increase by one. It's good to keep in mind that the priority deal marker will go to the left of the player who took the last stock action. So in this case, blue passed and green purchased a 10% certificate from Spalding, paying the company $50. Then we move to the building phase. Players will simultaneously choose a building tile to place and choose a building tile to discard. You would first deal two building tiles to each player. You would skip this in round one or decade one. In round two and three, you will deal two from era two, and rounds four and five, you will deal two from era three. Then each player will select one building to play on their building space on the main game board, and they will select one to remove from the game. You will keep one building tile in your hand at the end of this phase. You will place these building tiles face down and reveal them simultaneously. Once you reveal the building tiles on your building spaces, you would populate the job market with the number of workers indicated on those tiles in the bottom right corner. You would place those workers on the most expensive spaces available. Then we move to the action phase. In turn order, you are going to place one partner meeple and take the action. You will continue going around until all partner meeples are placed. The action cost is always paid by the company treasury, not the player treasury during this phase. Look at the top left corner of the action space to see the type of payments. The type of payments that you can see are bank to player, company to player, company to the bank, bank to the company, and company to stockholders. Now let's look at some of the general action spaces. Hire workers. The company will pay the bank for each worker, and if there are none in the job market, they can pay 50 per worker. Advertising and start player. The company would pay the bank $20 and then increase their appeal on the appeal track by one and change their turn order to be first, which takes effect immediately. Hire manager. The company would pay $60 to the bank to hire one manager. Hire salesperson. The company would pay $70 to the bank to hire one salesperson. Capital investment. The company would pay the bank the amount listed above the capital investment tile that they chose. They would then place the capital investment tile on their company. After you've placed the capital asset tile on your company charter, you would slide the asset tiles to the right and then draw an asset tile for the $80 location. And then gain the bonus in the bottom right corner of the capital investment tile. It's good to keep in mind with the automation bonus that you can only replace a worker spot being used and not an empty worker spot. Extra dividends. The company would pay the bank $100 and then pay dividends per share. So 100 divided by 10 per share and then they would adjust their stock value track. And finally, fundraising. The bank would pay the company the money indicated on that location. It's good to keep in mind that only green locations or locations marked with the infinity symbol can have more than one partner meeple during that decade or round. There are three ways to get another partner meeple. When you operate all of the factories in your starting company, when you reach the third decade, and when your first company reaches the appeal track bonus. Next, the operating phase. In appeal track order, companies are going to take actions. The company highest on the appeal track will go first. If there is a tie, the company on top will go first. Then you would perform any of the following actions. Purchase resources. You would pay per cube from the supply chain. Trade at Haymarket Square. You would trade two of the same resource for any one resource in this location. Produce goods, starting with the leftmost factory. The factories may produce only one time. When doing so, you will check that all worker spaces are filled, all resources are filled, and all the factories to the left must have produced during this phase. Then you would place the resources in Haymarket Square, gain the good tokens indicated. If the factory has a manager, you would trigger the ability after you collect the good tokens. Then each appeal bonus goods token would gain one good after production. 
It's good to keep in mind that if you do not produce goods or sell and pay dividends, your stock value on the stock value track will drop by one space. Then distribute. You will sell goods to the demand tiles. You may sell as many as you like to any available good spots in the correct industry row. The value of each good sold is listed on the left side of your company charter. Also, if you are the last good placed on the first or second column demand tile, you will gain the bonus at the top of that column. When distributing, you will tally your total money. And then finally, you will pay dividends or withhold. After totaling your distribution money, you must decide to pay dividends or withhold. If you had no distribution, you must withhold and drop one on the stock value track. If you choose to pay dividends, you will take that total revenue, divide it by 10, and that is the earnings per share from the bank to either the player or the company. If you choose to withhold, the company will retain any and all of the revenue. Then you will adjust the stock value. If you withheld, the stock value will go down one space on the stock value track. If you pay dividends, you would determine using your stock bump guide how much the stock value will increase. It's good to keep in mind that anything under 60 can only go up two spaces. And then finally, you would end the company turn. If any supply chain is empty, you would move the next higher location in the supply chain down. And if the X location is empty, you would draw resources based on the decade. So in this case, Brunswick bought resources from the supply chain, produced one good, sold it to a demand tile, and chose to pay dividends. Because it was double, the stock value on the stock value track it went up two spaces. So in this case, Spalding bought resources from the supply chain, produced six goods, and sold four goods to the demand tiles. Since they paid dividends of $100, they went up two spaces on the stock value track. Then we move to the cleanup phase. This is where we reset the board. First, you discard the rightmost capital asset tile located in the $40 location and shift all of the capital asset tiles to the right and draw a new capital asset tile to place on the $80 location. Next, refresh the demand tiles. You will remove any field demand tiles from the game along with the X tile. You will then slide the rows to the right then you will slide the demand tiles towards the center of the board, then refill the demand area top to bottom, right to left. And then you will remove any resource tokens in the $10 supply chain location and place them in Haymarket Square. Then you will shift the remaining resource locations to the right one space, and then draw new resources from the bag and place them on the X location. It's good to keep in mind that if the resource bag ever runs out of resource cubes, you would then remove all of the cubes from Haymarket Square, fill in your supply chain, and then place two of each type of resource in Haymarket Square. And then finally, you will return all of the partner meeples to their prospective players. Then rounds and decades would continue until the end of the fifth decade or round. At the end of the fifth and final round, you would go into the final scoring. The final scoring takes three steps. Step one, you would resolve each goal tile. If players were tied, then both would gain the reward. A description of each of the goal tiles, building tiles, capital assets, are all listed in the rulebook. Step two, you would sell all of your shares at stock value. And then finally, step three, you would count up your money. The player with the most money is Chicago's greatest entrepreneur, and wins City of the Big Shoulders.